Hello students, this is Dr. Zia Ahmed, live on YouTube channel. I have shared the link with your GR as well. So by clicking that link, you can come live on this channel and watch the stream as well. Uh, but just you need to give a comment in the comment section telling that you are present here and you are getting my voice and my picture very well if, if it's okay give in the comment i'm waiting once uh, anybody has given the comment i shall be starting the lecture all right uh, somebody has commented that it's all okay so we start now with the small lecture on ice candy man uh, okay everybody this is uh, the lecture on ice candy man the text of chapter 8 will be read out today. So I advise all of you who are from Namal University, I mean Namalians and Namalunas, they should hit the chapter 8 of Ice Candy Man and open the first page of chapter 8 of Ice Candy Man. Uh, anyone comment that you have done so? Okay, let's have a start. Uh, chapter 8 of Ice Candy Man, the very first page that we are on at this moment. Uh, my digital book shows that we have 75 page number. Of the text, possibly it may be a different page uh, on, on your hard books or hard copies, but on the soft copy, it's 75 page. And chapter is 8. So the first page of chapter 8, which begins with when I return from Imam Deen's village. Uh, this is the page that we are going to start with. But I am ignoring all this page and uh, shifting you people on the second page of the chapter that is 76 page according to this uh, soft copy of Ice Candy Man. And here uh, I have selected three, four paragraphs in together in order to talk about them, in order to analyze them. And please come therefore to the fourth last passage of the page two of this chapter. Uh, I shall read this for you. If we were in the class uh, before each other, I would ask you people to read. But now, as you your picture is not coming to me, your voice is not coming to me, only your comments are coming. So that is why I shall read myself and you people are required to listen and make mental notes so that we can talk later on. Uh, the passage that I have selected, these are like that. Aya carries me screaming into the kitchen and proceeds to splash my face at the sink. Imam Deen pops a chicken heart into my mouth. Yusuf carries Adi back to the kitchen. Adi's mouth is working. It too has something popped into it. I wonder what. An uneasy truce is contemplated as we scrutinize each other's ruminating mouths. And from here the line will begin, which is of our benefit. A short while later, when everyone is busy preparing dinner, we slip unobserved beneath the dinner table. Friends, again, we have done this innumerable times. One would imagine that someone might think to look under the table and chase us away before dinner is served. The table is supported by stands of polished wood. The stands are held to by a beam which runs six inches above the floor. We roost quietly on the beam in cloths of green twilight amidst a display of trouser cuffs, sari borders, ankles, shoes, and a medley of fragrance. Uh, these are three small passages that we first need to talk about with reference to Lenny's childhood and Lenny's way of uh, living her life and imagining and looking at the people. Right now, all of us can imagine that Lenny is the one who is going to make us understand the people from their foot, from their legs. Because Lenny is taking us down with Adi under the table where people are sitting around the table in order to enjoy a dinner. At this moment, Definitely under the table only legs and foot are visible. So it's the dexterity and cleverness and uh, you see the skill of uh, Babsi Sidwa that not only the faces are important in her text but also the legs and the foot are also important. So that is why right now we are looking at the foot of the people uh, with the eye of Lenny. What are what type of people these are? Lenny is telling us that uh, she has been doing with her brother for a, long, uh, for a very long time that whenever the people would sit for their dinners and lunches and she would definitely creep down under the table and find out the shoes of anyone, 
legs of anyone and foot of anyone. So this is the way how the children observe the people, which possibly is not known to anyone. And Sidwa says that not only we will be looking at the people and recognizing them from their faces, but also as children, this is the lower part of the body. I mean, the legs or the foot of the people, which is making them know how they are and who they are and what is the kind of quality of life it is they are having. So that is why the initial paragraph that I selected is to make us a kind of preparation that how Sidwa uses Lenny, the narrator, in order to let us know what is the personality of a person when he is known with respect to the foot, with respect to the lower part of the legs, with respect to the sari borders, or with respect to the pant borders, whatever the bottom is being worn by the people. This is the way how one can see what is happening. Apparently, these passages give a type of humor on the part of Sidwa as well, but one is surprised to see the technique with which the characters are to be recognized. So, uh, keeping this thing in mind, let us proceed to the next page. And on the next page, 77, uh, according to my digital book, uh, this is the third page of the chapter. Here, we have one more passage. This should be called the first passage of the, uh, of the page. Uh, I read this passage for you people. Her husband is not a bad man. Mr. Singh does not beat her or white slave traffic in her. But he has habits that would drive mother up the wall. I have heard her say so. He roams on long hairy legs in loose cotton drawers, barefoot. He milks his water buffalo himself. He converses loudly in vituperative Punjabi. And he clears his throat and spits around generally, conducting himself like a coarse jut in a village. Mother expects more refined conduct from a man married to an American woman. So this description uh, goes to show that one man sitting in the party on the table for the sake of enjoying of that food is a Sikh whose name is being given here as Mr. Singh. And this Mr. Singh is married to an American woman. Uh, so his description is coming up from the way Lenny is looking at the foot of that person. Uh, and Lenny therefore tells us that he is the man famous, Mr. Singh is the man famous for not beating his wife, especially because his wife is a white woman. She's white American woman. And uh, on the other hand, if we look at him, he is only this thing. Uh, he's doing good. Otherwise, he is the one who will show all coarseness in him like a jot or like a simple farmer. Uh, or like a peasant, for example, he is spitting here and there after cleaning his throat and then he is moving about his animals also and is, uh, and is taking care of his buffaloes himself and milking the buffaloes and giving them water and the food himself as well. So in a way, he is a very simple type of jot and former type of person, but still he is married to an American. This is a very unique scene because here we can see that a simple Indian Sikh is married to a white woman. Most of the time we have seen that the white people colonize the non-white people. But here is one case where we can imagine that a white woman is being colonized in a way married, in, given into marriage, marriage by a Sikh or an Indian. The same case possibly happened in Sara Saleri's father when she writes the novel Meatless Days. In that also we find that Sara's mom is the white woman and uh, uh, Mr. Z. who is the who is an Indian, they are married to each other. So in that way, the post-colonial aspect is also present and the history of the Pakistani people is also present that first before getting partitioned, India did have this type of situations when one Sikh was married to a white American woman. Uh, so not only this thing is here, but also the paragraph goes to show how Lenny very cleverly knows each and every person and is talking about the qualities of that person as well. Now Sikh is going to be uh, a dominant type of person that he would like to say anything to anyone is a blunt type of person that is the art of characterization that Sidwa has tried to show as well uh, keeping this thing in mind let's proceed by by saying that uh, Lenny is underneath the table and she's uh, looking at the people from their legs and foot and smells whatever they are spitting that is coming out of uh, these people and Lenny is describing all that first one was uh, Mr. Singh about whom we have got uh, but there's a joke as well in the same chapter, for example, if you come to the next page at the start of the page, which may be termed the 78th page of the chapter, the fourth page of the chapter, here we see that uh, uh, a joke is being cracked by the father of Lenny. Uh, and he says, according to this joke, uh, I read this for you people. It says the British soldier and a turbaned native find themselves sharing a compartment. 
They are traveling by the Khaiba mail to Peshawar. The Indian lifts a bottle of scotch to his mouth frequently. He does not offer any to the soldier. When the Indian leaves the compartment for a moment, the soldier steals his hasty draught from the bottle. Again, the Indian goes out and the Tommy sneaks another swig. They get to talking. The soldier confides he took a draw or two from the Indian bottle of scotch. Since you didn't offer it to me, old chap, I helped myself, he says, companion ably. The native is aghast. But that is my urine in the bottle, he exclaims. My Hakim pr prescribed it as a cure for syphilis. Now, this is a very interesting paragraph. It describes about a joke. I think everybody has understood that a British soldier was traveling and this Sikh man, Indian man, was traveling towards Peshawar in the Khyber Mail. And the Indian man was taking some urine uh, out of a bottle and it was taken by his companion as a kind of wine. So when the Indian went out, the soldier took the draughts of the wine without thinking, without knowing what actually he is taking and drinking. When he comes back, the Indian comes back, the soldier tells him that he has taken two draughts and the Indian becomes very much surprised and says that it was actually a jirin. So in that way, uh, a, a joke has been cracked in order to show uh, the kind of moment which had become tense because of the discussion which was going on among the people. Lenny's father tells this joke in order to make the environment light or make the environment happy. So that is the way Sidwa very delicately introduces to us a type of uh, humor in her text as well. Or that also goes to throw light on some of the characters from India and some of the characters from British army or British people. Uh, Indian has not been shown that uh, clever, but the British person has been shown to be very simple that he couldn't even judge what was the drink being taken by the man. So in that way, some of the light has been thrown upon the uh, upon the people, Indian or the British people in this chapter also. Uh, let's go to the next uh, uh, part of our lecture and uh, remaining on the same page, uh, we will be having a start of the political aspect in this novel, which is actually the gist of the novel. All the other things are secondary. There only some art of description has been used, but in case of political aspect of the novel, as the title goes to suggest Ice Candy Man or Cracking India, we have a lot of element which is about the political one. For example, on the same page, uh, we are going to read the passage which begins where we will have Savaraj. The last passage of the page is there. We will have Savaraj declaims Mr. Singh in deafening belligerence, as if the Englishman, instead of hinting at the premature departure of the British, has just denied him home rule. So that is the political aspect. In the whole discussion which was taking place on the table at the home of Lenny, one of the things is that the people of India want the Savaraj. It means that they want their own rule. They want the British people to go out. And therefore, the Indians sitting on the table tell this message to the white man that at every cost the white man has to go out and the people of India will rule on India. So that is the way how nationalism is being suggested and how it is being told to us that the Indian people at that time were quite ready in order to get the rule back from the British people and the British people were still present there. So in that way, political discussion starts in this chapter. I shall be relating this passage with, the, with some next coming paragraph in order to show how the novel has become political. In fact, this is the history of Pakistan. This is the politics of Pakistan. This is the background of Pakistan in which everything has been created. Uh, the historical aspect and historicization has been done by the writer in order to let us know what was working at the background of all that when Pakistan was created. So let's go to the next page. This is going to be uh, page 80, uh, the second passage of page 80, or uh, this is the sixth or seventh page of the chapter. I mean, uh, the table page where the people have been seen and, the, and Lenny is observing, it's the next to that page. Uh, the paragraph is second. It says they even rejected Lord Bevel's suggestion for an interim government with the majority Congress representation. They are like three bloody monkeys. They refuse to hear or see that Jinnah has the backing of 70 million Indian Muslims. Those arrogant Hindus have blown the last chance for an undivided India. Gandhi and Nehru are forcing the League to push for Pakistan. Now, this passage is not only political, but it's also historical. Uh, political, in the, political in the sense that it goes to reflect and, uh, and throw a lot of light on the political scenario that was taking place. Uh, it is historical also because history is being repeated in the sense that there were many political parties in India at that time. There was Congress party, there was Muslim League party as well. And uh, the Congress party as well as the supporters of Congress party, they were saying that they have to 
get India as a whole without any division. Muslims possibly, some of the Muslims possibly supported the Indian party and some people did not. And because of that whole situation, Qaeda uh, Azim Muhammad Ali Jinnah was being forced to demand for a separate homeland and the white man is accusing the Indian people that instead of keeping themselves united, the Indian people, the Sikhs, the hardliner Hindus are forcing uh, Jinnah in order to demand for a separate homeland. So in this way, how the demand for Pakistan had started, that has been talked about here, and how the white man puts all the blame on the Indians for the creation of Pakistan. For example, he says in this passage that it was not the intention of the white people to create Pakistan, but rather it were the Hindus, the very hardliner Hindus, who treated the Muslims and the minorities of India in a very harsh way. And that is why Jinnah was forced to, you know, beg for or ask the British government in order to create Pakistan. So in that way, they are putting the blame on Indians for the division of India instead of uh, taking any blames on themselves. And that is the cleverness of the white man that he would never take anything on himself. But we also have a type of understanding after reading this paragraph, the political understanding is here, that Pakistan was created only because two nation theory was there. And according to two nation theory, this was not possible for the Muslims to live with the Hindus and that is why Pakistan was created. And that, that's the reason we, I all the time call such paragraphs to be political which are hinting upon the uh, freedom movement or independence movement and partition of India especially. So in that way, th there are certain political elements in this chapter as well. Let's move on to the next passage uh, by skipping one more page, coming to uh, page 82 according to my soft book. Uh, let me read few of the lines from here in order to continue with the discussion. Uh, for example, the start of the page is there that I'm going to take into account. I can visualize mother's hand on the inspector's arm. None except father can resist her touch. There is a tense pause. Oh, all right. I'm sorry, old boy. I shouldn't have said that, says the Englishman gruffly. In sandaled feet, in sandaled feet, father toddles back to his own seat and Mr. Singh's muscular thighs comments the rhythmic pitching with renewed vigor. Mother and Mrs. Rogers chatter excessively about the weather. Suddenly they become quite, you know, old chap, Inspector General Rogers has said to, has just said to Mr. Singh. Now these lines are <coughs> reflective of uh, one important, very important factor that when the people who were sitting on the table at the home of Lani, uh, for example, Mr. Singh and other British people and Parsis and many other who were sitting there, they started to fight with the white man and a type of uh, violence had started at that time. No, it was the turn of uh, uh, Lenny's father and Lenny's mother in order to reconcile people, in order to let them not fight with each other. And that is why not only the father of Lenny was standing and trying to appease the people or create peace among these people, but also Lenny's mom was there who was trying to stop Mr. Singh also and the white men also that they shouldn't fight with each other. Uh, in that way, Lenny's mom and father, I mean the parents of Lenny at their home are assuming a very important role that if the Parsis are there, these are the people who can make the other people feel happy and good without fighting with each other. And on the other hand, the claim is also being done that Parsis were closer to the British people as compared to other people. So that's why the British would agree to them. And so a kind of reconciliation is struck by Lenny's parents among these people. And one of the sentences is very you know, powerful, the very beginning sentence, for example, when Lenny looks at that uh, mother is touching the arm of inspector and then the comment from Lenny comes, none except father can resist her touch. It means that mom's touch was so good that even Mr. Rogers, who is an inspector of police, had to stop fighting and had to give uh, a type of appeasement to himself and feel good as well. So the way importance is assumed by the Parsi people, that has been talked about by Sid Wynne's paragraph in order to show that everything was going on very, very good because of these people. So that is the most important role which uh, Sidwa tries to assign to our community that these are the people who are the reconciliating people, who are the people who can stand like a bridge among different communities or they have played a very positive role in order to get closeness to the British people. So that paragraph is significant in that respect. Let's go to the next page now, students. Let's go to the next page. And we can skip the next page, which is 82 and then 83 page is there, 84 page. Let's come to the 84 page of uh, this, uh, this uh, book. And chapter 8 is continuing. There is a star where I am present right now on the page. And beneath the star, the first line is 
father has a 20 minute nap i hope everybody has reached there let me read this passage for you father has a 20 minute nap after lunch not 19 not 21 precisely 20 he knots his kerchief tightly around his eyes and lies down flat on the bed with his sandals on Mother removes his sandals, his socks, if he's wearing socks, blows tenderly between his toes, and with cooing noises, caresses his feet. With a stern finger on her lips, she hushes the household until father's internal alarm clock causes him to jump out of bed and within four minutes on to his bicycle. Where on the one hand, the paragraph indicates how Lenny's mom was quite good to her husband and how she uh, served him in the most comforting manner, but it's not that important we are to uh, see how the father was sleeping only 20 minutes. The writer says, neither he slept less than 20 minutes, nor he slept more than 20 minutes. There's a preciseness in his behavior. So in that way, Parsi culture is being pointed out that the Parsi men who were the very successful men, they were the men who did the things very punctually, very regularly, and so that is why even the sleep was quite calculated. So when he came home, he took his food, slept for 20 minutes, and after that, once again, he was on his bicycle to reach his business. So that's the way how Sidwa points out to the things which are being indicated about the Parsi people, how punctual or regular these people were, and how they would take care of the things which were being done by them. Well, uh, I have a question from Sheikh Tala, but I shall be answering in that. First, I have to complete the chapter. After that, all these questions will be talked about. So let's go down once again to another page of uh, this chapter by skipping one more page, two pages rather. Let's skip two pages and then come to page 87 uh, of this book of the same chapter we are on. Probably we are reaching to the end and close of the chapter. But before we close that, we have a number of small passages to talk about. Uh, so therefore, I shall read these passages so that we can have a little bit of the knowledge of these things which are mentioned here. For example, from the start of this very page 87, uh, leaving two small passages in the beginning. Uh, let me read for you people. It goes like that. Mother, breathing heavily, plunges her hands here and there, and with a triumphant cry, sprints out of the room, her stubby fingers closed on a large vat of notes. Oi, Ullu, father says, rushing after her. It's not my money. You crazy. I shall bring you your housekeeping money from the office. I shall take only what I have to. Mother shouts, locking herself into the bathroom. I haven't even paid Lenny's physiotherapist. Yes, I have to buy the children's clothes for Christmas and New Year. Christmas, Easter, Eid, Diwali. We celebrate them all. Oi, mad woman, hisses father through the door, ostensibly mindful of the servant's ears. Show me sense. I owe the money. I have to return it on my way to the office, give it back once. I shall give it after I have taken what I need. Jana, mother, warbles and suddenly opens the door, shoves the bundle at my father. Before she had time to move to her cupboard, father has flicked through the notes and counted them. Are you have taken far too much. He exclaims as if shaken to the core and bankrupted by the banditry. But I am also schooled to read between the lines of my father's face. His heart is not in his anguish mother must have withdrawn a very meager and reasonable sum indeed she's bent on destroying us father grumbles striking his forehead again and again money 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 uh, from morning to night money 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 i am fed up but mother with dew in her eyes and mr smile blows and kisses and having locked the money in her cupboard she goes about her business of picking up father's clothes and tidying the beds and getting dressed no these are the lines which are really very significant and that they are the close, they are the close of the chapter also. Uh, I must say that uh, as we have one incident of fight and violence in this, uh, in this chapter, in the beginning of this chapter, now the writer perhaps wanted to lighten and tone down the things which were happening in a very angry way. The writer tries to talk about one very small funny incident that has taken place between the husband and the wife. I think all the students might have understood that uh, money was hidden by the husband of uh, uh, Lenny's mom definitely and Lenny's mom wanted to know where the money was because she wanted some money and the father was not giving so they struggled with each other not in an angry way but in a very funny way ultimately uh, mom of Lenny reaches the money and she uh, gets the money and runs away and the father is unable to stop her and uh, she takes out certain notes but the father is father is keeping on crying why you have taken money this is too much money and why you are taking that much and the mom is very you know funny at this moment and she rather blows kisses in return instead of fighting she blows kisses air kisses to her 
So therefore, we can have a light type of lighter tone being introduced by the writer so that before beginning with the hard and harsh realities of political life of the people of India, once again, the lighter tone has been introduced so that some type of romance and some type of happiness may also be present in the book. And that's why this incident of getting of money by Lenny's mom in a forceful way and by uh, getting the money in a very funny way, lovely way that has also been talked about. So on the one hand, we have the indication of a very good relationship of the husband wife, Lenny's mother and father uh, that they enjoyed. But on the other hand, we also have once again the repetition of the Parsi culture. Parsi men have been shown to be very miserly people, not spending the money in that way as most of the time we expect. And that is why perhaps they are able to command a lot of money and they are able to accumulate a lot of money because they save the money. They don't waste their money. But however, their loving wives possibly can snatch from them any amount of money as it would happen with you people who are listening that one day your wives will be getting all the money from you people and giving you only counted notes to put in the pocket and go out of the home. The same thing has been happening in the past time also. And in that way, the third thing which uh, perhaps Silva wanted us to understand is the good relationship that the Parsi people enjoyed with the, uh, we can say, domestic life which they enjoy. Their wives are very much loving to you, we have been shown. And their men are again very much loving to their wives also. This is what the writer wants us to understand. So this chapter is significant with the respect that it goes to show us the political aspect of the novel the history of the Pakistani people, where the combination, uh, the type of art combination was present at the house of Lenny. And Lenny was observing all these people with different touches we have been shown. And lastly, we have this incident of the Parsi people as well. So that is the chapter eight. And uh, uh, you people are required to answer one of the questions possibly that why Parsi people were playing this much significant role in the politics and history of uh, Pakistan and India. I think now can I, I can take up your questions if you have any and if you don't even have the question do not fail to give your comments about your understanding what you have got in this uh, in this short video lecture. Uh, for example, I would like to answer Tala's question. Why uh, Parsis were close to the British people Mr. Tala has asked. Uh, in fact, the demand of freedom was being made by the Hindus and by the Muslims. Hindus were in very much majority and the Muslims were not in that majority, but still they were uh, more in majority as compared to many other people. So that is why the Parsi people did not have any type of demands to, you know, demand a separate country for themselves. These people rather wanted a protection type of behavior. Protection could come at that time only from the British people. That is why in every way they would try to associate themselves with the British people and protected them, provided them, facilitated them. And that is why uh, British people also regarded them very special. And so they are very close to that. Uh, we don't have uh, any other question. There's no question being raised by the students. And if you don't have the question, if you have understood everything, which is a type of illusion for me that everything has been understood. But still, if you uh, give your comment, what you have understood, that will give me a lot of courage about that. Uh, Tala has put the second question as well. That's good, Mr. Tala. Why the writer has chosen a, why the writer has chosen Parsi, Parsi character as a protagonist of the novel? You know, the writer is herself Parsi. And Parsi people are trying to save their culture and the values which they possibly had, some good values, some bad values. In the current world of globalization and post-colonialism, neo-colonialism, some of the values of the Parsi people are disappearing, especially because of the advent of Islam in Iran and uh, the advent of Islam in Pakistan, in India as well. They, they are losing their grip of the values. And that is why the writer has tried to sustain some of the values, tried to reinvigorate some of the values. And that is why uh, she has made one person, Parsi person, as the protagonist. And moreover, Lenny is the representative, is the reflection of the writer herself, how the writer was. The single most thing that we can talk about is the legs of Lenny. Uh, Bapsi Sidwa herself had a type of uh, problem, polyostritical leg, and that is why Lenny also had the same. Uh, and so Lenny's childhood is being used in order to give an impartiality to the historical story. One could blame Parsi people by saying that Sidwa has taken her own side of the story, but by describing through the eyes of a child, it has been possible for her to show that it was totally an independent or uh, a type of impartial view which she wanted to give. 
we have another question from Huma Farid. Uh, what is the meaning of the divide and rule notion? Well, this chapter doesn't say anything about divide and rule, uh, but still I will be reflecting on that. When uh, white people were very little in number and the Indian people were great and much in number, at that time it was a really difficult thing to rule over such a large population and especially when Muslims were already the rulers and they were still present there. And uh, so the white people had a type of danger and threat from the Muslims and Hindus uh, also, especially from the Muslims. So it was very easy for them to make the people fight with each other instead of fighting with them. So they had a type of policy, the type, they had a type of notion that if the people keep on busy within themselves, settling their scores themselves, they will not be paying attention to the white people. So as a result, this type of notion is present there that the divide and rule continued at that time. And well, this divide and rule is continuing even today as well. I hope Huma's question is satisfied. Uh, I am not seeing any other questions. Uh, please come up with any other questions or even if the comment is there. I, I expect some question or comment from Sidra, from Sana, from Rabia, from Rimsha. If these people are present uh, uh, on online right now, they should pose a question. Uh, the boys, for example, uh, they too were present in the class. They should also say something. At least they should comment or put a question because we have uh, we are we are left with only two three minutes to continue the stream. After that, it will be over, and you will be only uh, to post your comments later on if you don't have any comments here. Sheikh Tala is putting another question: uh, What is the effect of colonization on Parsis as they were very close to the British? Well, uh, Tala, this is very important question. Uh, the very uh, novels written by Vapsi Sidwa are mainly based on uh, the, uh, you know, partition theme. But Sidwa herself puts a comment by saying in one of her novels that Muslims got Pakistan, Indians got, Hindus got India. What did the Parsis get? Nothing actually. And so this is perhaps the kind of uh, historical lamentation or sadness that Parsi didn't get anything out of that because decided that the British didn't want any separate country for them and perhaps therefore the end is uh, just equal. But but they got a protection from the British people and the similar protection they still are enjoying from the two governments of uh, like India and Pakistan. They are still counted to be very good people as Pepsi Sidwa herself. So that is perhaps the kind of social benefit they got. They didn't get any historical or political benefit. Okay. Hafsa Khan is present. That's good. Uh, you should see these lectures and try to create the similar kind of things in your classes wherever you are. I would say that uh, Sidra Parveen is also present. That's good. You people may uh, later on present your you know comments or any other thing you want to say about this video in the comment section later on. Also, it will be available on Facebook as well. You can comment there as well. But note the question. The question you need to answer. The central most position of the Parsi people has been shown in this chapter why it has been done, right? Why uh, Parsi people or the home of Lani is given the central position by the writer. Uh, quote three, four reasons with the text and after that one can complete the answer. So we will be once again together, MA English third semester Namal, we will be once again present after two days to continue with the more chapters of Pepsi Sidwa and after that some other book as well till the university gets open. So, so far, that's it from me, uh, Dr. Zia Ahmed. Hopefully, this has been useful. I don't know the judge will be the students and they will be answering whether it was good or not. So far from me, it's going to be the end of uh, the whole session. Thank you very much, all of you. I'm sorry, Shoaib, I won't be able to answer. Your time is up now. You should have posed this question uh, uh, earlier. It's not there. So, thank you, everybody. Uh, hopefully, uh, we will be meeting soon.